A Tulsa County District judge is deciding whether two Tulsa men were wrongly convicted in a drive-by shooting case when they were teenagers 21 years ago. In 1995, DeMarco Carpenter and Malcolm Scott were convicted of murdering a young woman and wounding two others. Attorneys working for the Oklahoma Innocent Project recently presented evidence in court, which they hope will set the two men free. Okay, no problem. Uh, this is Michael Lee Wilson speaking to an attorney for the Oklahoma Innocence Project two days before he was executed by the state of Oklahoma in 2014. He received the death penalty for the beating death of Tulsa convenience store clerk Richard Yost during a robbery in February of 1995. But what Wilson is talking about during this video is an altogether different crime. But I shot Karen Summers, uh, Ken Price, and I think, I don't remember his name, I, I want to say his name was Alonzo, but all I know was by his little seven. Wilson says he was the one who shot from the back seat of a car into a crowded street party attended by rival gang members in the early morning hours of September 10th, 1994. 19-year-old Karen Summers was shot and killed. Two young men were wounded. Billy Alverson was driving. I was behind him on the, pageant, on the driver's side and Richard Hardrow was in the back seat on the passenger side. But the suspects police arrested and charged in the drive-by shooting were DeMarco Carpenter and Malcolm Scott, both 17. Wilson says two days after Carpenter and police Scott were picked up, a police officer showed up at his house. He came to the house wanting to question me, and what's so crazy, I have the gun on me. Okay. Wilson says while he was putting on his shoes to go into the police station for questioning, he took the murder weapon out of his waistband and tried to hide it. But he says the detective saw him trying to conceal something and confiscated the weapon. They're asking me all these questions, and like, do you know Malcolm Scott? Do you know, I'm like, yeah, I know Malcolm Scott. Well, he's just he's been arrested for the murder, of, for murder. I'm like, wow. I was like, um, I didn't know anything. I was like, okay. So they're asking me all these questions, and I'm nervous because I know they got the murder weapon. I'm like, damn, I'm finna go to jail. But the police didn't know it was the murder weapon until it was tested for ballistics weeks later. It kind of blew me away that I got caught with a gun and they just let me go. They didn't arrest me for possession of a firearm or anything. Okay. They just let me go. Wilson was eventually charged but cut a five-year plea deal to testify against Scott and Carpenter. Wilson's video was played during a recent evidentiary hearing in Tulsa County District Court. Attorneys for the Oklahoma Innocent Project are trying to prove that Scott and Carpenter have been in prison for 21 years for a crime they didn't commit. A packed courtroom not only saw the Wilson video, but listened to the testimony of DOC inmate Richard Harjo. On the witness stand, Harjo testified he was a passenger in the car when Wilson did the drive-by shooting. Harjo is serving a life sentence for the convenience store murder of Richard Yost. Billy Alverson was executed in 2011 for his role in the Yost murder. Harjo says Alverson was at the wheel of the car during the drive-by shooting. James Dunn is head of the appellate division for the okay. Tulsa County District Attorney's but, Office. You know, just trying to say that now all of this is somehow newly discovered evidence and you've got three people who have got nothing to lose. You know, I mean Harjo and Alverson's dead. It was a handwritten statement. How could I cross-examine that? But what does Harjo have to gain by putting himself in the car, ducking down because of uh, return gunfire? Are you saying that testimony was not credible? I think a lot of what this, it's, it's, I'm not saying it's totally incredible. It's just that I don't know in this kind of situation what he really has to lose by saying that. He's doing life without parole. For 10 years, private investigator Eric Cullen has been investigating what he believes are the wrongful convictions of Carpenter and Scott. No physical evidence that points anywhere but Michael Wilson, and then two rival gang members who have tons of skin in the game. Like a lot of gang cases, these people are, you know, will give multiple different stories because of the fact that they don't want to testify and then when it comes time to testify, they come in and they, you don't know what they're going to say. Carpenter's mother, sister and brother attended the recent hearing. Pamela Carter and her son James were both alibi witness at the trial two decades ago. And I knew he was with me and Malcolm was at that house that night and I know they didn't do it. I knew it. It was a life-changing event. So I remember everything. 
James says he was only 14 but vividly remembers his brother being at home on the night of the drive-by shooting. He says several people at their house that night could have also been alibi witnesses. If they would have done a job like they were supposed to, a lot of people's life wouldn't have been dramatically changed. Like say, I was, they didn't question me, they didn't question my mama's boyfriend, they didn't question my friend across the street, they didn't ask the young women that they was with, they didn't question nobody. They just literally picked them up, y'all guilty. Just because I'm a mother, they told me mother's life for these kids. That's not true. I wasn't raised like that. Lamitra Carpenter has visited her big brother in prison on and off for 21 years. I know he keeps strong for us, but I know that this has bothered him and has put a lot of pain in his heart and mind. And so that's what makes me emotional, is to see him go through that. Malcolm Scott's family is praying for the exoneration of the two men. Scott's sister says her brother is hopeful. He was telling us that, and he was like, this is a long time coming, sis. And I was like, yes, yes, it is a long time coming, because we've been waiting on this day for so long. The Carpenters have guarded optimism. And if he was tonight, <laughs> I think that would tear all of us apart all over again. Just A judge will rule on their fate April 13th.